Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja and I want to welcome you back to another edition of Your Adrenal Fix. Today I want to talk to you about an alternative approach to testing hormones. I know a lot of you who are watching this that are suffering with adrenal fatigue have done cortisol testing through saliva, which I have done in the past and I have really, really liked because it's done over the course of a day meaning a lot of the blood testing that a doctor will do for your cortisol levels are done at one time or two times of the day and it doesn't give you an accurate reflection of how well the cortisol rhythm is doing, meaning are you vibrant and waking up with a lot of energy and crashing in the middle of the day? Are you waking up with no energy and then getting more energy as the day goes on? Are you having spikes in your energy levels? So what's really great about saliva samples is it will tell you how you're doing at different times of the day. Um, however, it does have some weaknesses, and the weaknesses are typically it doesn't tell you a lot about the metabolites. And when we talk about metabolites, we're talking about how does the, does the hormone break down in, in its elimination from the body, and if it's going towards one direction versus another direction, then that could be more inflammatory, angiogenic, or um, disruptive to your body continuing your suffering and so the way I explain it is imagine on the price is right where you had the Plinko and the person would drop the Plinko at the top and it would go down this way down this way and then it would end up some random place in the middle um, typically if we are in a chronic stress response whether it's an autoimmunity it's a virus it's a lifestyle, it's a job, it's a spouse, it's a husband or wife, um, you're chronically causing a stress response that you will go down the wrong pathway and cause a lot of problems. So what's really great about a dried urine total hormone test or called the Dutch test is it will look at the greater metabolites of how well or how poorly you're breaking down your, your hormones. And so I use a test, it's called the Dutch test it's by Precision Lab. I'll use another video to explain how we do it. But I wanted to give you a case study. I wanted to go over a patient that did the Dutch test with me and gave us some awesome information. So we have a patient who is a 52-year-old female. I'm not going to mention any names. And she is just exhausted. She's fatigued. She's got brain fog. She has difficulty losing weight. She has gastrointestinal dysfunction. And so basically we did a gut repair protocol. And we looked at her uh, leakiness of her gut. And I'll do another test uh, video to explain that. But she had rampant breakdown of her gut lining. Um, we also found that she had um, reactivities to gluten. And so all of that in and of itself is going to be draining to the adrenal glands. And the reason it is is because imagine you have the inability to break down foods. You're not secreting enough stomach acids or you don't have enough digestive enzymes. And so that food is just sitting there fermenting, causing inflammation, causing breakdown of the gut lining. And as a result of the breakdown of the gut lining, food is passing partially undigested into the immune system the immune system creates an immune reactivity and now we have a food sensitivity and that antibody that was created against the food is now going and potentially cross-reacting against the thyroid so it all starts down with the breakdown of the gut the inflama inflammation part of it is where the adrenals come in and every time you eat food that your food that you're reacting to or have an antibody to or you're intolerant to you're asking the adrenals to to mount a stress response and over time with life and stress and all the other things it's just too much so that's what happened so anyway she had a lot of gut breakdown and we put her on a gut protocol but we just got her hormone saliva test back and we have some interesting findings and I want to explain that with you today so so basically we do a total estrogen and so for a 52 year old woman there is actually a postmenopausal range which is somewhere below the 27 range and so she came back and her score was 84.8. So it was huge. It was humongous. And I asked her, are you doing any hormones that you didn't tell me about? She said, no, absolutely not. So what happened was we traced it back to the fact that she is taking some, some anti-aging creams. And guess what? These anti-aging creams have hormones in it. And so if we're talking about, say, like a Clinique or a some kind of some facial cream that you put on, that has, and that's anti-aging, that has hormones in there. And that is causing her to go 
super, super high. And when we look at the breakdown of E1, E2, and E3 for a postmenopausal female, she should be between 3 and 7, and she's 32.3. For E2, she should be between 0.3 and 0.9, and she's 7.8. And so between E3, she should be 1.5 and 4.0, and she's 22. So on top of the fact that she has gut breakdown, food reactivity, food sensitivities to gluten, inflammation, draining of her adrenal glands, she's pouring humongous amounts of estrogen in her body. And as a result, that estrogen has to be broken down. And if it's not being broken down efficiently, meaning it's going more to a... Uh, inflammatory breakdown in phase one or she's not methylating enough for phase two all videos that I will create for you guys a little later then that's going to continue to drain her adrenal glands um, and, and as we look we look at her free cortisol levels and it should be between 80 to 180 and she was 18 so that's really low her free cortisol level is the amount that's available for total use that's not bound to a protein um, it typically represents 1-3% to 3 of the total cortisol sum. So what we like to do is we like to look at her metabolized cortisol or the cortisol that's being produced for the day and how much has been used up. And she should be between 2240 to 4300 and she's only at 2357. So she's low and she's really low on her free cortisol. So let's sum this up. She has low metabolized cortisol. She doesn't produce a lot of cortisol for the day. Her free cortisol is very, very low, so the amount that's available for use is very, very low. She has no energy. She's fatigued. She has brain fog. She has a lot of leakiness of her gut that causes inflammation. She reacts to gluten, and there's other foods that she reacts to as well. And on top of that, she has way too much estrogen that's breaking down in the inappropriate ways, and we got to get rid of it. So I always say there's little hinges that swing big doors. One of the little hinges is to identify the creams that she's using and don't use them anymore because that's not going to continue to mount too much estrogen. We're not even talking about methylation and if she's not able to break down hormones effectively because of genetic weak links then this is going to further complicate her problem. Um, she also has um, the activity of um, not producing enough cortisol for the day and and that's because potentially there's so much inflammation in her body. So so hopefully this gives you a little bit of uh, an idea as to how a functional medicine doctor will approach a person who's told there's no such thing as adrenal fatigue and, and, and we try to approach it from a functional diagnostic point of view and look at her gut breakdown, food reactivity, her total hormone panels and this is what I would encourage you to get out of this video is, is that the saliva samples, although they're very good and they can compare to a blood test a lot better, the total hormone panel it just knocks it out of the water because I'm able to look at how these metabolites are breaking down. Um, I'm able to look at the ratios of cortisol to cortisone, so how much is used and how much is used isn't used. I'm able to look at the total free cortisol versus how much metabolized is used. I'm able to look at progesterone metabolites in the urine and estrogen metabolites and which way they're going and it just gives me a better indication so for her not only do we have to get her um, not using the creams anymore but also potentially an estrogen blocker like a DIM or IC3 or I3C um, those are things that could be helpful for her as well so just wanted to give you a heads up hopefully you found this video enlightening if you did please give me a thumbs up or a share and be sure to check out my blog at uh, adrenalfatiguesociety.com and I hope you enjoyed another edition of your adrenal fix. Thank you so much.